Coming up next on Headline Humboldt, with almost half a billion dollars awarded to a long planned wind power project, the infrastructure necessary to support such an endeavor is finally in the offing. We'll sit down with Chairman Greg Dale and Development Director Rob Homeland from the Humboldt Bay Harbor District to discuss how that money will be used and how the port can be expected to change in the coming years. Coming up now on Headline Humboldt. On the top of Humboldt Hill, this is Headline Humboldt. I'm James Falk. Thanks for joining us once again. This week's announcement that the federal government has awarded more than $426 million, you heard that right, to the Humboldt Bay Harbor Recreation and Conservation District was one of the biggest headlines I've ever had the opportunity to report on this show, Headline Humboldt. The money will go toward the construction and maintenance of infrastructure to support a major wind power development off the Humboldt County coast. The announcement made by North Coast Congressman Jared Huffman and elsewhere by California Senator Alex Padilla was much cause for celebration throughout the maritime industry in Humboldt County as it promises new life for a port and region that have struggled in recent decades to define the future. The official news was broken locally in front of the Fisherman's Memorial on Woodley Island this week in front of an excited group of public servants and elected officials who have worked long and hard to see this happen. Over the last two decades, I've been witness to many discussions and debates about how Humboldt County can make the best use of its natural harbor to help support local industry while also protecting our natural resources. It's been a bone of contention and a source of some considerable debate over the past several years. Yet through the use and deployment of those federal dollars, what was once a port devoted to industries of extraction will now have the vital role of helping America achieve a renewable energy future that can supply the demands of our economy while not destroying the environment. It's an occasion for celebration, for seriousness of purpose, and for a lot of hard work. The grant for the Humboldt Bay Offshore Wind Port Project comes through the Department of Transportation's Freight and Highway Projects Grant Program, which itself received substantial funding through uh, an increase in the bipartisan infrastructure law. Congressman Jared Huffman told the crowd this week that this allocation of funds is the result of hard work and dedication from a lot of interested parties. Today we've got, I believe, 426 million reasons uh, to be grateful. <laughs> The, uh, the Federal Department of Transportation infra grant that we are celebrating today, to my knowledge, may be the biggest federal investment in this region in 50 years. It's a big, big deal. It's a game changer. I'm excited because uh, I like the way it aligns with our community needs and the opportunities to do wonderful things uh, for economic development, thousands of good paying jobs, union jobs right here in Humboldt County partnerships and opportunities for our tribes who are essential partners in this effort, um, a big step forward toward meeting our climate goals. And, you know, really, any way you look at it, I don't think anything like this has come along for Humboldt County uh, in decades, certainly not uh, since I came to be your congressman 12 years ago. It is just fantastic news. I want to uh, commend the Harbor District for its recent decision to lean in on uh, developing a green port, as green as it can possibly be. I think it's important that we uh, do that to show the way to others who are going to follow with floating offshore wind and other clean energy projects. I want you to know that we're going we're to stick with it all the way across the finish line. This is going to be a wonderful, wonderful success for this community and really for the state of California and the whole country. Joining us now in studio is President Greg Dale from the Harbor Board and Development Director Rob Homeland, also from the Harbor District. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you, James. So uh, we'll start with you, um, Greg. If you were described in the Lost Coast Outpost as being emotional about at this event, and you were, it was a passionate speech you delivered. Can you talk a little bit about the sense of accomplishment and what it means to reach this point after the process has unfolded over these many months? It's been many years. I mean, and yeah, I, yeah, I, I, everybody who knows me knows I'm an emotional uh, uh, guy anyways. That's so a good thing, I think. I'm not saying... Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah sometimes. <laughs> uh, I think, I think I've, been, I've been, you know, working on the Bay my entire career. My, my family and I have worked out there. Um, and one of the things that we, we've always, we've always uh, cooperated with industry and and the environment and growing shellfish and water quality coast seafoods right coast, coast seafoods, seafoods. Yeah. and i and i think all those things can work together yeah. 
Yeah. But you have to communicate, you have to be careful. Um, and so it's been a long time that we've been working to develop something in Humboldt Bay that is, is uh, uh, productive, yeah. all right? And, and, and provides jobs and income and economic, uh, in, uh, economic activity for the Bay. Yeah. They don't all fit, you yeah. know? There, there are certain things that fit in our Bay, there are certain things that don't. And this has always been something that I thought was beneficial for our bay. I think I think the the fact that we don't need to generate energy using fossil fuels and to pollute our atmosphere and our oceans is is uh, a game changer. And Absolutely. if we can be a part of that in Humboldt Bay, it's going to be huge. Yeah, and I'm, I'm excited for that. Okay, I got a. Bunch of follow-up questions, but let's turn to Rob here real quick. Before we started the show, you made you made a point about how there um, people need to be clear about what the responsibilities are for the Harbor District in this. The Harbor District isn't going to be in the business of transmission of power or developing that off-site facility that will eventually be running that. Its responsibility is different, and so is the money for this grant. Can you explain that a little bit for us? Yeah, sure. Um, so the State and federal governments have decided that they want to transition away from fossil fuel-based power, and offshore wind is, is among the multiple things that both the state and federal governments are going to do. That requires a whole lot of different kinds of projects happening simultaneously. There has to be a change in our transmission infrastructure on how power moves from one place to another. Yeah. There has to be, effectively, power plants out in the ocean. And because this equipment, just the nature of it, it has to be manufactured in ports. Yeah. So the ports of California will play a really critical role in this, in the manufacturing of equipment. Mm -hmm. Humboldt Bay Harbor District's one of those ports. We're gonna play a really important role. Um, but our role is limited to the uh, manufacturing facility in the port of Humboldt Bay. We're not directly involved in the transmission. We're not involved in the offshore power plants that are out in the ocean 30 miles offshore. Our role is big, but yeah. it's very specific and limited to the, uh, the development project in Humboldt Bay to manufacture equipment. Now, can I ask you real quick, why is Humboldt Bay considered an ideal spot for this kind of thing? I mean, obviously there were other ports to choose from and Humboldt County got the, the nod. Can you explain to us a little bit of why Humboldt County is so centrally like pivotal? Sure, uh, I'll give you the short answer. You tell me if you want a longer okay, answer. Okay, okay. Uh, it has to do with the, the depth of our navigation channel coming into the bay, the width of the channel, and the fact that we don't have any bridges okay. uh, that, that block the bay. So San Francisco Bay, for instance, has the right channel depth and the right channel width, but the Golden Gate Bridge blocks the entrance. And so the equipment is too tall to move past the Golden Gate Bridge. You look up and down the coast of, of uh, the west coast of the United States, mm -hmm. and there are really only five ports that can do what we do, and we happen to be in the geographic center. Ah, so that makes it good for all kinds of reasons. Yeah. Now, does, that, does the depth issue uh, have to do with what we've dredged, or are we gonna have to continue to maintain that depth, or is that something that's it's ancillary, that we're at that depth without the dredging? Uh, that's part of the longer answer. So the, our, okay. <laughs> our navigation channel, any navigation channel, uh, is enacted by an act of Congress mm -hmm. to be dredged down to a specific depth. Yeah. Our entrance is uh, authorized to go down to a depth of 48 feet. Mm -hmm. So the U.S. Car Corps of uh, Engineers um, has the authority to dredge our channel down to 48 feet deep at the entrance all year round. Okay. They only keep it at that depth depending on ship traffic. Mm -hmm. So right now we have limited ship traffic, so they dredge as needed. Sometimes our entrance fills up and it needs to be dredged, <coughs> you know, and it, it backs up. Yeah. In the future with offshore winds, they're already authorized. They'll just likely increase their, their dredge frequency, which will be good for any fisherman or anyone that comes and goes out of our bay. Um, the, the bay entrance will be safer and dredged more frequently. Okay. Now, Greg, uh, one of the things that I've, I mentioned at the start of the show and has been an ongoing fact for as long as I've been in this business, there's been a divide in Humboldt County, whether you want to call it political or social or whatever else, between people who kind of want to maintain Humboldt County as a, uh, you know, a natural uh, draw for people who enjoy tourism and you know, the, that sort of thing, and then people who want to have an industry like they used to have in the pulp mill and things out on Samoa, where there would be economic opportunity to go with the hunting and the fishing and everything else that people like to do. It seems to me that this may be the perfect marriage of both. I would agree. And so yeah, can you talk a little bit about that? I mean, could this heal some of those divides that we've suffered through over the past generations? I, I wouldn't guarantee that it would heal some of the divides. I mean, yeah. some of those divides are, are there for uh, a lot of 
reasons that Other we may reasons. or may not be able yeah. to put our finger on. But sure. I think that this this activity can coexist with all the other activities that we have going on in the Bay quite nicely. Yeah. And the ultimately, there anytime you have a project that's going to produce uh, equipment of this size and transport things around in and out of the bay, you're going to have some impact. That's what I was. Another thing I was going to ask you: Can you delineate and what some of those might be that people may not be expecting? Or well, your the visual is going to be. You know, it's good. They're going to be big. Yeah, yeah. You're going to see these. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and that's something that we're all going to have to get used to. I think for for a while. Yeah. Um, the technology is probably going to change over the next. This is going to be a long term project, so I'm sure that things are going to change between now and and 2050, 2070. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping to, to, to watch that happen. Sure, yeah, yeah. But uh, I think a lot, of the, a lot of the items that we are all concerned about are impacts to water quality, impacts to benthic invertebrates, impacts to uh, eelgrass, um, what happens in the bay, some of the ecological processes that we all follow very closely. Yeah. Um, and I think we can do that easily in the bay. Not easily, but I think it's completely doable. Right? doable. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But we have to pay pay attention. We have to uh, use smart and good um, science. Um, we have to listen to people that that give us good, credible information. Yeah. And I think you know people like Rob have got. He's got a long list of of people that are doing that for us right now. I mean, we've been criticized at the district for not having a lot of capacity. We have a small staff. Mm -hmm. But Rob continually says, and I think he's accurate, that we, we have literally the best scientists and the best engineers in the world working on this for us. They're yeah. giving us that information. They work for the district, for the port, um, and for our community to develop and design a place that's going to have minimal impacts. Yeah. Now, uh, before the show, you were mentioning that it's going to be, I believe, off to the left of the Samoa Bridge as you're going out toward Manila. Is that That's right? right. Yep. And how many acres did you say it was? 180 acres. 180 total. acures, basically from the bridge. Uh, that's south, right? Yeah, south to the left. South to the smokestack, yeah. So that'll be a pretty significant viewshed uh, alteration. But, um, I mean, I think that we grew up with, you know, um, things on the horizon. And I, I, for one, have missed it because... <laughs> It was something that kept people employed, and it, it's not necessarily translating into some of those deep ecological impacts that this project will actually, in the long term, help to fix, right? Yes. I mean, so one of the other things I wanted to talk about was the long list of ancillary benefits that you guys have listed in your press release. Um, and I'll kind of just briefly, briefly run through some of them. Um, you got $51 million for environmental restoration. Now, is that, when, when it says environmental restor restoration, is that for problems that exist now that we're going to go back and fix, or is it problems that are going to come about because of the project? You see what I'm saying? Are, they, are those mitigation monies, or are those fixed problems that currently exist right now money? I think that's both. Both. Okay, cool. I mean, I think we've got, we've got lots of things we've been, I, I would call it deferred maintenance, sure. um, that we need to, we, we've needed to take care of for a long time, um, pilings around the bay, different um, structures in the bay, um, and and we're going to have impacts that we're going to have to mitigate for when we build this dock. Yeah, so yeah. Rob, Rob's got a whole long list. This is his permit application, yeah. and a lot of these things are ideas that he's taken input. And it's one of the things as a as a board member, you you hear from the public all the time, yeah, yeah. and sometimes you don't get to actually discuss things with them, but. We listen to what people say, yeah. and we and we do implement as much of it as we possibly can. Yeah. And so a lot of these things have come from input from the public. Yeah. Um, and I think Rob's done a really good job of putting it all together. You want to talk a little bit about that, Rob? I mean, what are, are there some projects that are, might arise out of this that people would be interested in knowing about at this point, or is it more to be developed later? Um, well, yes. So we're working with uh, <laughs> we're working with I think seven different regulatory agencies to evaluate what can we use that money for to have the best ecological improvements on Humboldt Bay yeah. in order to compensate for some of the impacts that the project will have. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's been a really great collaboration. And I think it's pretty typical for big projects to analyze their impacts, then go to regulatory agencies and try to mitigate them. We're going about it in a different way and starting right away with the, with the regulatory agencies forming committees around different topics and meeting with them on a reoccurring regular basis to say, how can we best benefit the Bay 
um, while this project is addressing climate change and you know trying to reverse sea level rise mm -hmm. as a renewable energy project we can also simultaneously have great uh, ecological benefits to the bay. I mean, to me, it sounds like in the end, there might be more stringent monitoring of the bay and its health after this project than there was before. Is that safe to say, do you think? I hope so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's fascinating, and that's good news. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to mention, which we talked a little bit about before, was the establishment of a grant fund that would be administered by the Harbor District um, that would be available for various groups who might be impacted by the, the construction of the project. And um, you're looking to get other uh, benefactors to chime in, but it would be a fund where people could come and seek funding for projects that have to do with the Bay, and it would be a new source of revenue. Is that right? For folks to build and yeah. envision things and do interesting stuff on Humboldt Bay. That's right. Yeah, yeah. you know, one easy example is um, sailing, you know, mm -hmm. recreational sailing on Humboldt Bay. Yeah. Uh, because of this project, it could uh, limit the area in which people can sail that they currently sell. Because the you know right now the that portion of the base really not used, and so now new ships will be coming in and traffic and, and, right, and whatnot. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so this grant program will be available so that uh, people that do recreational boating on the bay can apply to this grant and maybe do a new kayak launch or something like that. We we don't know where this is going to go. Yeah. Uh, other candidates that can apply will be tribes, local tribes. Uh, residents of the Samoa Peninsula or community groups or schools or nonprofits in the Samoa Peninsula. So we're still formulating this, but generally it's it's a way to compensate people that will be impacted by the project through the development of other projects. Yeah. One question I had, which isn't really addressed in, in the, the documentation that I've seen so far, is how will this prepare the Harbor District for the future? I mean, you have this project that's going to come online, but there's going to be infrastructure being improved and built just to even start this, I assume, because you're going to have to allow things to come in that are bigger than normal and that sort of thing. Will this increase capacity for the port on other fronts besides just this project? Yeah, no, absolutely. So what, what we do have in excess, and I, and I say in excess, we have a lot of commercial industrial waterfront property, yeah. okay? And it's underutilized, and a lot of our private dock owners are... are um, industrial properties around around the bay doesn't have to necessarily be on the bay will benefit from this as as honestly you know you said california ports this is going to benefit ports on the entire west coast sure everybody's going to play a role in this industry um and in our bay yeah. uh, on the entire west coast but i do think that um the district has you know it are because we are reliant on shipping and our shipping, you know, wood products are not shipped out of here like they used to be. We ship wood chips. Yeah. We bring, um, we used to ship some lumber, some logs. Uh, we bring fuel in. But commerce over the bar is what drives our budget, most yeah. of our budget. We, have, we get some money from, from property taxes, but our budget's small. Mm -hmm. And this is going to increase that revenue source just because there's going to be more shipping, more tariffs. Yeah. Um, coming across the bar, the Harbor District can use that to do to meet some of its mandates. Yeah. You know, conservation, recreational, on um, development. Uh, we've got a, like I said, we've got a lot of deferred maintenance and and deferred projects that we would all like to do, just haven't been able to do for lack of funding. Yeah. So I think this is going to have a, uh, it's going to implement a big change in the way the district operates. Yeah. Um, and as you know, everything is more expensive today. <laughs> Our revenues have not kept up with the expenses. We, we struggled dredging the marina. Yeah. Um, the marina is currently, in the middle of crab season, not, not at capacity, not at, not, hasn't been dredged to the proper depth in some time. So we have boats that have to leave at high tide, stuck in the mud. You know, we, we've got all kinds of issues going on, and this will help us alleviate some of those issues. Now, a, a sort of a related question is, I mean, you mentioned the fishing fleet and the crab boats and, and that sort of thing. With all this extra traffic, is, do you think that the, those industries will be negatively impacted or will they be able to coexist harmoniously with what's going to be going on during construction? I, I think uh, the goal is that they all, they all coexist yeah. harmoniously, mm -hmm. may, may be an exaggeration. Of course, um, right. But our For goal is to, is to make sure that everybody can operate and, and do what they need to do. Are there going to be changes? Are things going to be the same? Probably not. Are going to, you know, things are going to change a little bit. But our goal is that everybody still does the same things when they need to do them. And, and we manage around things. 
Yeah. Um, but I don't, currently, I don't, I, you know, Rob said the, 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 the yacht club and the, and the sailors in the bay, they're, they're going to have some space taken away from them. Yeah. I, I, have a, I have a personal friend that talks to me all the time about this. <laughs> um, and I think uh, it's legitimate. Yeah, it's, yeah. A le it's a legitimate concern yeah. that we're going we're gonna to have to address and deal with. Yeah. There's going to be a period of flex and adjustment, right? I mean, yeah. as everyone learns what's going to be available and what's not going to be available. But to offset that, jobs, right? I mean, like, can you talk a little bit about what the economic impact from this is going to be? Are the contractors who are going to come in to build, are they going to bring their own crews or are they going to hire locally? Do you have any sense of what the job uh, increase might be from, from this project? Yeah, uh, so our board signed a project labor agreement several months ago, um, mm -hmm. so it will be union labor that does the construction. Okay. Uh, and the construction will happen in phases. Um, that, that project labor agreement has a lot of really interesting things built into it. So one is a 20% local hiring ah. um, goal. So yeah, yeah. The, the goal is at least 20% of the construction jobs are people that live in Humboldt County. And they will have to be union members as well? That's right. That's oh, that's right. good. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's absolutely good. And then there is a list of preferences in here. I don't know if you want to speak to this, Greg. Please. Uh, you know, the, when the unions are looking for people to hire for the construction of this project, the first thing on the list is tribal members. So they have yeah. to um, have a, a trial, tribal member hiring preference uh, of Humboldt or Del Norte County tribes. Okay. Then veterans. Yeah. Then people that... Um, graduated from a school in Humboldt County. Um, so even if you went to elementary school, graduated sixth grade, and then moved to SoCal or anywhere, and you want to come back, or high school or college, right? So any graduate of any school in Humboldt County that wants to come back, right? So there's this list of preferences that the unions have to go through before they can bring in people from outside the area. Yeah. Um, so that's important. Your, your question about number of jobs, we're still doing modeling on the total number of jobs. And it's a confusing topic because, yeah. you know, uh, you know the, the project will require some electricians. Mm -hmm. A team of electricians, say 10, 20 electricians will come in. They'll only be on site for four weeks or yeah, eight weeks. Yeah, it's like and if you're building a house, you have right. contractors coming in and going. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. Each one of those is considered a job even if they're only in town or on the project site for four weeks. Okay. So in total, the total number of jobs is probably in the hundreds or thousands. But we've also done modeling what's the impact to the community. And so the total number of construction workers on site at any given time, any day, is likely to never exceed one to 200 total people at a time. So it's not like we're going to be totally rushed with thousands of workers all at once. Yeah. It's going to be lots of jobs spread out over you know, a couple of years of construction. Long term, how, much, how big would the crew be to manage this facility? The operations post-construction? Yeah, yeah. Also in that one to 200 uh, person total. Uh, wow. Workers. Yeah. So that's a that's a sizable contingent that will be required full time. I mean, yep. and those are good paying jobs. And that's just this one project site. It's going to yeah, stimulate right. other projects. So, for instance, you're going to have a power plant out in the ocean, right? Lots, mm -hmm. hundreds of wind turbines, 30 miles offshore. You'll barely be able to see them on the clearest day, yeah. um, and it takes a while to get out there. So there will be vessels uh, of uh, you know, it's called crew transfer vessels that'll pull into port. Specialists will get onto the ships and then go out into the ocean and maintain and operate uh, those wind farms. So that's separate from our project, but also really interesting, exciting jobs. Yeah, yeah. That'll include divers, you know, electricians, mechanics, helicopter pilots, or the, the list of jobs that this project will stimulate is far beyond just what will be working at this project site. Yeah. And I mean, it, it basically makes uh, the Humboldt Port a, a site of some major development. And it's just weird to say that, I mean, honestly, after so long of watching us want something but not being able to get it, um, I think that this is fantastic. And James, you remember when, when they were, uh, the peninsula was operating? Yeah. Probably not at full speed, you're not you're not. No, no, old. but I, my uncle worked at the Pulp Mill, and yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and I, 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 I envision this project being about this, when you look at pictures of the 70s out mm -hmm. there, there's yeah. going to be less people out there today than there was in the 70s. Okay. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of jobs out there compared to what it looks like today or what it looked like in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, exciting, but the, what, what Rob said is there's going to be jobs um, all around that aren't necessarily at that site. Yeah. That are, that are you know, electricians. You're going to have people 
there's discussion, and I, I don't know where this is going to go, but there's lots of discussions about supply chain making the, the mooring lines here. Yeah. All right? Yeah, yeah. Um, making the anchors here. Those will be done off-site um, and, yeah. and hauled to the bay. But those sorts of jobs, guardrails. One of my favorite conversations I had with a, a man from um, Denmark at one of our conferences is it's like, if, if you just put the handrails on these things, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's, that's a full industry for 100 welders. Wow. All right, think yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they don't need to be on the dock. Yeah, yeah. And there's other exciting jobs too as well. Um, you know, there's the Marine Mammal Protection Act and the California Endangered Species Act. And so many of these large ships are gonna have to have uh, environmental ecological monitors on board. So, you know, uh, um, say, a uh, a pennaped specialist that's on the deck with binoculars looking for seals and sea lions to make sure that the ships don't impact them. Yeah. So the, the range of jobs is really diverse. And for a lot of the talent that right now feels like it has to leave Humboldt County because there aren't the jobs, maybe we can finally begin to attract some of those folks here or let them stay here for their careers. Which, and train them here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We have two minutes left. Um, but real quick, I wanted to get at where the status is with uh, Crowley Wind Services. Can you guys explain before we go that that is still kind of in the offing, but it seems like that's gonna be the partner and that the, the, whoever that is has to match this grant amount, is that right? Well, yeah, the goal, the goal is, is, to get, is to match, mm -hmm. um, or you know, match construction needs, the, and that this is supposed to be half of it. Okay. Lord knows what it'll end up being. Absolutely right. Um, but Crowley, we, we are actively negotiating with Crowley. They are our, our, our partner. Mm -hmm. um, we, haven't, we don't have a lease negotiated with them yet, but mm -hmm. we hope to in the future. Um, and, I, and I think that's going uh, as well as can be expected. I think this whole industry is going to take some time to, to get off the uh, off of dead center. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so there's no real rush, except we just got $426 million, and we want to get going. Absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. it's going to take some time. Yeah. So we've got a lot of, uh, a lot of work to do. But no, Crowley is, is actively engaged with us and we are actively engaged with them. Okay, and Rob, last question. I mean, you're the staff member who's been working thing, this thing through the process, the application and whatnot. Can you talk a little bit about the challenge of managing this kind of thing? How, how difficult mm -hmm. was it and do you feel like, um, you know, obviously job well done, you got the, the grant, but. Thanks, it was a, a big team of people involved. Okay. Um, and honestly, we already had $19 million in grants that yeah. we've received over the past couple of years. So this 426 brings it up to 480 some million. Uh, and so we have hired a number of consulting specialists across a broad range of specialties. So we really do have world-class experts working on this with us. Excellent. James, Thanks. I got one more thing. Okay. You got to give, you, I know you gave Congressman Huffman some credit in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. He's been there from the very beginning with us. Yeah. Um, the pulp mill, the water quality, dredging, um, and this grant, uh, the man deserves some credit. Absolutely, absolutely. And he's passionate about this project, has yeah. been for a long time. Yes, thank you. All right, well, thank you guys very much for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you. Um, that's it for tonight. Thank you guys for coming on the show, and stay tuned, stay informed. <laughs>